taste so much better out of this cup. <laughs> So just the other day, I did one of those ask me a question things on Instagram and I wanted to make a video out of it rather than just post it on my Instagram story because I feel like I have a lot to say when you guys ask me questions, so I want to just turn it into a video. I actually got a lot of great questions. Questions about self-acceptance all the way to like, Juliana, stop making YouTube videos really terrible and you're not funny. So there were a lot of questions and uh, stuff that people said, so I'm excited to answer them today and if you want to... I don't know where I was going with that. If you want to keep watching, then keep watching. <laughs> okay, so the first question that we're going to answer. Let's just start off with a bang. Do you get affected by what other people think of you and your outlooks? If yes, how do you cope? No. Yeah, no. You have to be really confident in your truth and what you have to offer and what you stand for. If you don't know what your foundation is or like what you stand for, of course you're gonna feel like insecure, just not good enough, you know, wonder why this person looks down on you. Of course you are. Until you find what you're living for and what's important to you, nothing will ever bother you. But you know, this doesn't mean be closed-minded. That's not the right attitude. I'm extremely open to feedback and ways that can help me be a better human being, you know, in this world. I feel like being closed-minded is capping yourself I'm a firm believer that anybody could teach you something. So instead of being super close-minded or putting your ego like in the way, take your ego out of it and think, you know, this person could teach me something. So no, I don't get affected by what other people think of me. I used to though. I'm not gonna lie. I definitely used to. Any advice for someone who just broke up and looking for a new relationship? First of all, I'm sorry. You're probably very sad and that stinks. Uh, heartbreaks are never easy. But I have to tell you this, my friend, do not go out looking for another relationship. I know this probably sounds corny and like you've heard this before, but like seriously, you need to create a loving relationship with yourself first and foremost. You cannot pass go, you cannot collect $100 or what is it, $200 for Monopoly? Yeah, you can't do all that unless you love yourself first. Once you really take yourself seriously and commit to being the best version of yourself, you become a magnet. As soon as you take yourself seriously and love yourself and love yourself with all flaws and learn that flaws are part of being human, you become a magnet to the perfect person for you and you just attract them. That's just physics? Magnets? Are they physics? In the end, if you're following your truth and another person is following their truth, you become a magnet because it's so true. And it all starts with how you love yourself. So that's my advice to you. Don't go looking for something. Find it here first and it will come to you. I am very shy and want to be more open like you. What is your advice to me? Okay, first of all, when did you sit down and define yourself as a shy person? Being shy is a label. It's a judgment and it doesn't define you. You have to avoid labeling yourself because as soon as you say, I'm a shy person, I'm so to myself, I'm always this way, blah, 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 you're gonna manifest that shyness even more. Focus on what and how you want to be. The power is literally all in you. And I know that sounds like the power is in me, like what the heck, like the power within from that SpongeBob episode, that's what I'm thinking about. The power within. Yeah! If you choose to be more extroverted and more lively and open and wanting to be more confident and not as shy or timid, you can be that. You have the choice to be that. It's all in your head. When will you get a nose job? Ever since I started putting myself online, like putting myself out there online, I've had so many people comment on the way that my nose looks. And I think to myself, wow, these people probably have a lot about themselves that they'd like to change, that they wanna put it on me and make me feel bad about how I look. I've never ever looked at my nose specifically and been like, I have an ugly nose, I have a big nose, it is this weird bump in it. I never looked at myself like that until people started attacking me online for the way my nose looks. Now, I do believe that everyone has the freedom to do whatever they want with their body, but there are no flaws in your body. God or the universe or the higher power, or whoever you believe in, whatever you believe in, it created you perfectly. You are without a flaw. You and I, we are created perfectly. And this is how God intended us to look. Now, if you're interested in doing Botox, plastic surgery, and all that, you have the right to your body, you have the right to do whatever you want, but before you do it, think about how 
once you get a surgery done, it's like a cycle. I feel like people who get a surgery done will be like, okay, now I got my nose done. I have a problem with my lips. My lips are too small. I need injections. You're always gonna find something to be dissatisfied in. You have to think about, are you doing it to be accepted by yourself or accepted by others? What are the long-term side effects of doing this, both physically and mentally? Can I find another way to accept myself? Because once you seriously accept yourself, it is very unlikely that you would look in the mirror and be like, well, I need to change this about myself. You'll just love yourself the way you look and you won't ever have thoughts about wanting to change the way you look. Botox or filler or whatever you wanna do, it's just a short-term solution, if you wanna call it, because your mind is gonna come up with something else to not like about yourself. It seriously always goes back to self-love. The secret to a happy life to you is da 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 da. A happy life is a grateful life. If you are grateful for everything you already have, you will always be happy. It's that simple. Learning to focus on the abundance that you already have in your life instead of what you lack in your life is the key to a happy life. The recipe for constant unhappiness is being like, I don't have this. I wish I had this much money. I wish I had this girl, this guy. I wish I had these looks. I wish I had her body. I wish I had this, 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 this. You're focused on the lack. Think about what you have. You know, think about your health, think about being grateful. If you wake up every morning and think of a couple things that you're grateful for, it transforms your day. It is like magic, seriously. This is also perfect. I'm actually filming this on Sunday, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and this video will come out on Wednesday, which is perfect. Think about what you're grateful for. It should be like that all year. This is something you need to practice every morning, every day to actually feel fulfilled and genuinely happy in your life. Stop focusing on what you don't have. That is the key. That's the way life works. And I've been using this like secret, this thing in life since I was a little kid. I have so many stories of wanting something and then like internalizing it and just using that power so much that stuff comes to me. It's like manifestation. It's real. It is real. I'm telling you, I'm on the internet telling you this so you need to trust me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, don't trust everything on the internet. Um, but you can trust me, seriously. I really have manifested things in my life. Ugh, I feel like I'm talking so much in this video, oh my gosh. There was this cat, I have to tell you, there was this cat. Ugh, I know I'm talking so much. If you really care, I love you. Thank you for still watching and listening to me ramble. But I need to tell you how I know manifestation works. I wanted a cat growing up so bad. My parents never got me one. I had a piggy bank. I was saving up for this cat, saving up, saving up. I just like really manifested this cat was gonna come. I was like, I already had the name picked out. I didn't even know what this cat looked like. I was just like, I'm gonna get a cat. I swear on my firstborn child. A stray cat came to my house. I manifested a cat to come to my house when I was like seven or eight years old. Maybe I was younger, I forget. But a stray cat came to my house and I fed it milk and it came back the next day and it kept coming back. I kept feeding it. We got a cat food. I really wanted a cat and I got my cat. It came. I manifested the cat. It stayed with us for probably like a year and then I didn't see it again. I don't know what happened. Maybe it found a house with our food. Anyway, I manifested this cat. I really wanted one and it came to me. And this is like a silly example, but it's true. And I've done this. I've thought about things in my life this way and I always tend to get them because I believe it to my core. It'd be cool like on the last day we do it, like we get it, like it'd be like a movie. So hopefully that happens. Pikachu! Can I catch a shark? Really like you can. I could. All right, I feel like that was a good question to end on. If you guys like this video, let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. I actually really enjoyed this. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm gonna go enjoy some food because I'm starving. Okay, bye. <laughs>